In this video, we'll take a look at this tropical scene I've done for the last screenshot Saturday and break down how I did it and what steps I took. Before starting, if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 4, level design and game development, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the new videos. Big shout out to Ben Lewis, Donald Anderson and Kama Sutra Industries for supporting me this month to improve the quality of my videos. Thanks a lot guys, you're the best. And now, without further ado, let's jump straight into this breakdown. First, I'm going to give a bit of backstory. Around last Saturday, I posted this scene on the subreddit of Unreal Engine 4 and it got a lot of attention, and by a lot I mean 360 F votes, which is a pretty good amount. And as well, in that post, I asked if people would like a breakdown to see how I did it and they said yes, and so here we are making the breakdown. Alright, enough with Reddit, let's now see the actual scene. The first step I took was deciding what I should create and what assets to use for this scene. Let's first start with the assets I used. For this project, I decided to use a tropical island environment by Anil Isbilir. Generally speaking, this pack is great, it offers a lot of meshes which you can use in various ways to get magnificent scenes and levels. Though there are some things I didn't like much about a pack like the trees and the low quality textures on top of the cliffs. But other than that, the pack is pretty good so I decided to use it. Then I had to choose what to make. This was pretty obvious from the name of the pack, I wanted to create a tropical island, something that looks good but not necessarily realistic. Step number 2, I needed inspiration. Very often when I make my scenes, I do everything from the top of my head without really thinking much, but this time I wanted to use something beforehand for inspiration. Ironically, for this step I used one of the preview images on the market page. Up to this point, I had almost everything, the only one thing that missed was experience. So before starting to create the scene, I went into a test level and tried some assets out. After 10 minutes of doing almost nothing with the assets, I was ready to start. Alright, now we are at step 3, defining the basic composition and then step 4, refining details, lighting, post process and overall mood. For the first part of the composition, I wanted to achieve something that would leave the viewer with the impression of, wow, those are a lot of trees. Well, not really, but I wanted it to look like a scene from a fantasy game. To get that result, I knew I had to add a lot of depth to my scene. So the first thought of mine was to add a lot of cliffs to separate different parts of the scene. And so I did, multiple levels and the rows of cliffs got me a nice depth in the scene. After showcasing this to multiple people, Bram, one of my good friends and a very talented 3D artist, told me that I could achieve even better depth using fog. But because I already had some exponential fog, I had to use cloud planes. Second step to finish my composition was to populate the cliffs with foliage. This was rather easy to do, I just had to drop in the background a lot of trees. In the middle ground I was careful with the placement so we wouldn't look off and in the foreground there was only one tree anyway. Besides trees, in the foreground I also used the grass provided with the pack to mask the material of the cliff. And for some more details I added a rock and a trunk which ended up looking like it's part of the cliff. So this was my composition, a lot of cliffs with trees, maybe it sounds like it should look bad but thankfully it didn't. In fact the way it looked really surprised me considering my composition skills and how good things usually look before adding other elements in the scene which we'll discuss later in the video. The next step was to start playing around with different effects such as exponential height fog, the atmospheric fog, real lighting and finally add post process to enhance the overall look of the scene. I first started with the fog which is usually my favorite but this time I had some problems with it. That is because this is the first time I did such a big map so I had to tweak around more settings than I usually do. But in the end I chose not to go with something too crazy, just a sudden effect to add more depth to the scene. For the lighting, I wanted to go with something bright though warm so I went with an intensity of 7 lux and the temperature of 4500. Of course, I used light shots for this scene as well and although they aren't that visible they still added some value to the scene. At this point I was pretty happy with the overall outcome but there was one major problem that I had to fix, that being that shadows were not cast at big distances. And so to fix this, I used the ray trace distance field shadows. This technique of shadowing goes well with a normal cascade system and is available for everyone, not only those with an RTX GPU. The way of combining these two methods work the following way. Cascade does its jobs to shadow up close objects, meanwhile distant field shadowing casts shadows in the distance where Cascade can't reach. I'll leave down in the description a link to learn more about it. And last but not least, I had to deal with post-processing. This one was quite easy because I knew what I wanted to achieve. And so I proceeded to do the usual setup. If you want to learn more about how I do my post-process volumes, I'll leave a link to the past video about this in the description of this video. And that was pretty much the entire process of creating this scene. It took me around 2 hours to make, maybe close to 3, and I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Let me know down below through a comment what you think, is it a good scene, and what do you think can be improved. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more tutorials and helpful tips, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.